there as well if you miss something. And let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. Can everybody see that all right? Yes. Fantastic. Uh, so uh, thank you all for coming to our uh, host uh, onboarding webinar for uh, the externship program. I know some of you are familiar with the externship program. Others of you, this might be your first time jumping in uh, on it. My name is Nate Dean. I'm the STEM education and work-based learning manager for the STEM Action Center. Uh, and also on the call is uh, Hallie Foltz, who I'm sure uh, many, if not all of you, have uh, already been in contact and communication with. Uh, she's our uh, program coordinator for the, the externship and will be kind of the main point of contact for uh, uh, most of the questions that you have or anything that might come up. Uh, I'm also happy to help as well. And both of our contact info is listed there at the top of the slide. Um, wanted to uh, include some introductions to some other uh, staff that you might have interactions with. Um, Stephanie Lee, uh, and actually uh, that's a previous title. She used to be our grants and contracts analyst. Uh, she is now our operations officer uh, moving up in the world. And um, she is uh, likely to be uh, one of the ones you talk to when it comes to, um, well, actually uh, the externs are likely to be talking to them when it comes to travel reimbursements, if those uh, types of issues are coming up or with the agreements going out. Uh, Francine McGrew is our fiscal manager. Uh, she helps out with that stuff as well. And then uh, Katie Bush Wilson is our STEM education coordination officer. Um, some of uh, the uh, uh, externship opportunities I know are also kind of blending in with iSTEM, which is another uh, program we offer for professional development for educators. If uh, you have questions because your program is connected to iSTEM, she handles the iSTEM side of those things, and so her contact information is there as well. Uh, so by this point, I'm guessing that most of you already have a pretty good idea of what the externship program is, so not going to spend a lot of time uh, diving into this, but just kind of want to give an overview so that everybody's getting the same uh, basic information going forward, and we can kind of all be on the same page. And then we'll cover some of the... Uh, kind of housekeeping things that um, you might need to be addressed as we get started. And uh, the main bulk of this is going to be opening up for questions uh, so that there's kind of a central forum where we can address anything for the good of the order that might apply to your individual situation or uh, possibly to other host sites as well. So uh, the point of our externship program is uh, we uh, have uh, Idaho businesses and industry partners uh, connect with educators and uh, host them. They they get to spend a summer uh, doing some in-depth uh, project-based work and get some professional learning experience, hopefully uh, getting to see over the course of that 200 hours um, how STEM skills and durable skills, 21st century skills, whatever you want to call them, uh, are applied in the uh, workplace. That way, as they're uh, working with their students, they can be making connections to your industry, helping students see what authentic STEM skills look like uh, in the workforce and get uh, kids excited about that in a way that connects to uh, real life and is not just some theoretical thing. Um, it also gives uh, all of you as uh, host sites an opportunity to kind of give back to the community to offer some professional learning and new perspectives to uh, those educators, and we hope that it will uh, help you and the educators that you're working with kind of build a professional network that can last beyond the externship, where uh, it gives you an in to be able to connect with uh, schools and educators uh, in your area around the state, and gives those educators a way to maybe bring industry into their classroom in a way that they wouldn't have uh, had the connection or felt comfortable doing otherwise. Um, if you're not familiar with the STEM Action Center, uh, we are uh, kind of a little micro agency under the office of the governor. 
And our job is to promote and coordinate STEM education throughout the state. And so uh, this is one of uh, our programs that we uh, uh, kind of have as our flagship program to be able to connect industry and educators in the process of doing that. And uh, this program is really being made possible through a partnership with Micron and the Workforce Development Council. Uh, and we've got a lot of other industry leaders and supporters throughout the state uh, who make this possible as well. So thank you to them for their support. Um, again, kind of getting into some of that housekeeping stuff. Uh, the STEM Action Center is not requiring uh, signed agreements or paperwork for hosts. Uh, you all had a, a fairly in-depth application process, and uh, that's kind of taken care of most of the paperwork side of things that we need from you on that end. Um, the agreements will be uh, only sent to the externs, and this information's already uh, been properly communicated with them, and we'll be having a similar webinar for them tomorrow to be able to follow up on some of those questions as well. Um, if your organization has a uh, specific onboarding process in place, and if there's any kind of housekeeping items that you uh, require and that need to be taken care of for your site, such as needing a security badge or getting a parking pass or any kind of special access concerns, uh, we just ask that you make sure you communicate that information to your extern or externs before their first day. That way way all of that can get taken care of ahead of time if possible. Uh, similarly, if there are any um, uh, dress code items or safety uh, uh, concerns that need to be taken into consideration, just make sure that those are communicated ahead of time as well. Um, externs have been informed that they need to uh, adhere to all of the work-related requirements from uh, their individual host sites, just as if they were hired on as an employee. So they should understand that expectation coming in or ready and waiting to hear from you if you have any of those items that they need to be uh, paying attention to or taking care of. Uh, as far as how payment and tracking of the hours will go, uh, externs will receive one check uh, uh, via uh, snail mail uh, for $5,000 uh, after they complete their two how, uh, 200 hours of work, and that will be sent from the STEM Action Center. That's a little bit different than it's been done in the past. We're trying to streamline things for them, and so there's not going to be uh, multiple invoicing uh, periods. And it's going to be the extern's responsibility to fill out and submit the invoice. We uh, will be taking care of getting all of that information that they need for that. Uh, as far as the hour tracking goes, um, that is going to be uh, kind of up to you and the extern to determine how you want to handle that. We do not have a specific requirement for how hours uh, are tracked. Um, but on the invoice, there is going to be a signature line for you as the host to attest that they did, in fact, complete their 200 hours of work. And that's uh, kind of that, um, uh, you know, double checking piece. Uh, so they submit the invoice, you sign off on it. Digital signature is totally acceptable uh, for those who are working remotely. And honestly, digital signature should be fine uh, if that's your preference, uh, even if they are in person. Um, the last day of the externship uh, is officially September 9th, 2024. Uh, your particular experience with the extern may end before that, depending on what kind of schedule you set up but uh, we need to make sure that we have all invoices uh, in prior to that date. So uh, work needs to be concluded before that so we can get that paperwork filed. Uh, if you or if your extern has any questions about payment, uh, direct them to extern at stem.idaho.gov. That email goes directly to Hallie and uh, Hallie will be able to uh, get the answer or uh, connect with our fiscal staff if uh, they need to answer the questions there. As far as other requirements, uh, just so you're aware of what the uh, externs are going to be expected to do over the course of their uh, experience with you in addition to whatever the uh, project they're working on over their 200 hours is, 
Um, they are going to be expected to complete a blog post at some point uh, during the uh, externship. And that uh, blog post will need to include some kind of an externship related photo of them. Um, we are asking that the externs get your permission uh, before uh, taking uh, that photo uh, while they're on the work site. Uh, it's not the case for every host site, but some host sites, uh, it's totally understandable. You may have concerns about how and where those pictures are taken and what shows up in those photos, depending on if they're working with sensitive items or uh, there's any kind of uh, 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 industry related things that you need to keep in house. We want to make sure that none of that's being included in photos that are going to be shared out on our social media platforms and whatnot. So you can work with your extern on that and uh, they know to be able to check with you first. And then we will also be having a site visit during the externship. Um, that will uh, be somewhere around the midpoint is our goal. And it's just kind of a chance for us to check in with uh, the extern and with you as the hosts, see how things are going and uh, make sure that everybody is having a fruitful experience and kind of gather feedback on how to uh, improve things and maybe offer additional support if we need to. And uh, for those who are having a fully remote experience, we'll be doing those site visits virtually over Zoom. Um, for all other uh, sites, our goal is to do in-person uh, visits. Uh, on an individual case-by-case -case basis, if something comes up where that's not possible, uh, we'll, we'll be in touch and we'll uh, talk about it. But our, our goal is to have every in-person uh, uh, placement uh, be accompanied by an in-person site visit. That way we get a really good idea of what the experience is looking like. Nate, I have a question. So when you say we are going to make a visit, that's who's we? Um, so, uh, yeah, it will be a STEM Action Center staff member. Um, myself and Hallie are uh, going to be uh, doing what I'd expect to be the lion's share of the visits. Um, our communications manager, uh, Morgan Howard, will also be uh, making some of the visits and uh, doing some photo ops and that type of thing that she'll arrange ahead of time. Um, and there's the possibility, given the record number of uh, placements that we had this year. Uh, we're over 100 placements for the year, which uh, we've never hit before, which is great. Uh, we are looking at the possibility of uh, possibly having another STEM Action Center staff member um, assisting with those visits as well. But we'll be coordinating that ahead of time before those visits. It will be, in some capacity, though, a STEM Action Center staff member. Um, travel reimbursement, uh, this, uh, I believe has mostly been taken care of already, but I did want to throw it out there. Uh, by now, uh, any conversations around travel reimbursement and getting, uh, approved kind of pre-approvals on having that be a uh, thing should have been taken care of. If you think there will be a need for travel reimbursement from the STEM Action Center, and you have not already been in communication with Hallie and gotten an answer on that, please reach out to us as soon as possible so that we can uh, get that taken care of. Um, we've already approved all of the travel requests that we were made aware of uh, that we are able to approve and have uh, had the conversations about ones that we are not able to approve. But if you have not been connected in there and you're like, I'm pretty sure that should apply to me, definitely make sure we get that taken care of right away. Um, the uh, travel reimbursement policy is dictated by state travel policy. There's a link there. It's also uh, found on our website. Um, and it's really going to be the extern's job to ensure that they're familiar with that policy and following it and filing for reimbursement correctly. Um, this is mostly just informational for your uh, side of things. But again, uh, any questions or if you need to reach out to us on that, uh, extern at stem.idaho.gov uh, and Hallie will get back to you right away on that. Hey, Nate, can I have a question, ask a question on the previous slide about the, the site visits? 
absolutely. Um, just when we're being contacted, are we going to be contacted and having the, the visit scheduled or will it be kind of like a pop in? Uh, our goal is to have the visits scheduled uh, well ahead of time. Uh, okay. Both uh, just, you know, out of respect for you guys having a lot of things going on. We don't want that to be an added stress of, hey, now suddenly there's somebody needing to come take a tour of your site when you weren't expecting them. That that can be problematic, even under the best circumstances. But we also are aware that uh, uh, many of the host sites have special considerations when they have visitors coming and in some cases, security concerns that uh, need yes. to be taken care of. And so uh, we will be scheduling those ahead of time and making sure that you're aware of when we're going to be coming up. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I was um, wondering, because we, we would need to have some liability release forms signed. and. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we want to try to make that as uh, smooth of a process on your end. And we don't want us coming to see the cool work that's going on to be anything but a positive experience for uh, you all. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And uh, that's kind of most of the uh, housekeeping information. Again, that was kind of just a really broad general overview of uh, uh, the information. Most of it is kind of the responsibility of the extern uh, at this point going forward, since you all uh, had built your project ideas beforehand as part of the application process. A lot of that was front-ended for uh, you as the host sites, but um, Holly and I can uh, field any uh, questions that you have uh, that weren't related to any of the specific slides as they came up, or if you have something that you've just thought of, uh, really the, the time and the floor is open for that going forward. I do want to chime in and say, um, that we're super appreciative of everybody's time interviewing the extern applicants. I know that's a big ask and it's a big time commitment and we're really appreciative. We made a lot of changes to the program this year and I hope that that was reflective in the process and um, we're just really appreciative of you joining the program this year and your time and um, your time moving forward. Absolutely, yes, thank you, Hallie. I have a quick question. Um, so the program is 200 hours of work. Would the program be completed then once that 200 hours of work um, is done? Or are there any other things that have to be, I guess, completed before they just go for the summer? Uh, so yeah, once they complete their 200 hours of work and the, the project is done and you sign off that they've completed those 200 hours, um, again, they're expected to do the blog post during the externship but there's really nothing else uh, beyond that as an expectation for their work or on you as host sites past that. Awesome, thank you. I have a quick question. Um, can you share the slide deck um, with us? Uh, just so I have it for reference is my first question. And um, for our facility, we require CPR, um, like pediatric uh, first aid training. Do the teachers already have that or do we need to coordinate that? Uh, the teachers may have that if they have uh, um, done coaching or uh, just kept a CPR certification active as uh, a personal choice. I know when I was in the classroom, I would say probably about a third of my colleagues uh, had an active CPR certification. But uh, that'll be something you'll need to coordinate with your individual extern. And if they don't, that will be something you'll have to arrange for them. So how can I contact my individual extern, uh, individual teachers? Uh, Hallie, uh, what would be the best way to go about that? So you should have their email addresses. I do not have all of the externs phone numbers. I have some of their phone numbers. Um, but I would say the best form of communication would just be to email them. Um, and if you need their, their number, cell phone number to ask them in the email. Okay. I have not received an email about the teachers that we have coming, uh, or the externs. Now, maybe the director did and didn't tell me. So how can I get that information? So are you listed as the point of contact for the externship or would that be somebody else? Um, it might be the director but she has not 
told me of any names yet or any email, no contacts. So I if can you, follow up with her and find out. Yeah, if you could just have your director who or whoever submitted the application, um, just let me know that you're going to be the point of contact moving forward. So I can share who those externs are and give you their email addresses and all that pertinent information. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And to your first part, we can absolutely uh, share out the slides. Uh, like I said, we'll also be posting uh, this recording to our YouTube as well, and we can share out the link to that. Awesome, thank you. Using appropriate teacher wait time here, which I can tell you from teaching online, uh, is always something that feels much longer than it actually is. <laughs> when will you have this uploaded to the YouTube? Should be within the next 48 hours. Okay. All right, I'll give it just a, another minute just to see if any last minute questions pop up, but um, again, if we hop off and something jumps into your brain right uh, as we close up, uh, don't hesitate to fire off an email uh, to Hallie, and uh, she's super responsive and is a rock star in terms of uh, managing this whole program, so uh, she'll get you taken care of. So besides YouTube, you will can you send this by email your slide deck? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That would be awesome. May I ask which organization you're with, just in case I don't have your email, I can send it to the point of contact that I currently have. East Street Community Center. Okay. Thank like you. The Zoom contact came to my email. That's the only thing I have seen is just the Zoom contact. The director did not get it. Um, so, so that my question, I, I don't know which one of us are because that this, this zoom contact, the zoom link came to me, not to her, okay. but she's the one that applied for the grant. Yeah. We'll definitely fix this offline. So you can be looped in on, on everything you need to know. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All righty. Uh, if there are no other questions, then, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, honor everybody's time and give the gift of five minutes back in your day. Uh, <laughs> hope you all have a, a wonderful day. And uh, again, thank you for uh, your your commitment to STEM education and for the opportunity that you're giving uh, to the educators who are going to be working with you over the summer. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing all the awesome stuff that they get to do with you. And uh, we we appreciate your partnership. Thank you, everyone. Pretty good. Thank you. Okay.